Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We all know a picture is worth a thousand words, but this picture is worth nearly 2,500 shares. Good evening, everyone. The picture shows three Fargo firefighters helping a man in a wheelchair cut his grass. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with the people in the photo about how a neighborly gesture has the community amazed. Cutting the grass for your parents can be a weekly chore for many people, including 35-year-old David Shove. It's just normal. I mow the grass. Shove is in a wheelchair and uses a push mower. I get like three feet at a time. Okay. I push, roll, push, roll, push, roll. It takes him about an hour and a half to mow the yard along University Drive. He admits sometimes car accidents have happened from people staring. He says people do offer him help. Sometimes he declines and sometimes he accepts. You have three firemen walking up to you to mow the grass. You kind of don't want to say no. I was like, sure. Three firefighters offered their help after the call they were out on was canceled. They saw David mowing in the heat and just wanted to lend a hand. He probably had three quarters of the lawn mowing done by the time we got there. So we did two little spots and um, just to finish it up. He had done most of it, so it was just so impressive that uh, with his disability, he's still out there being active and doing stuff like that. Captain Eric Eisenmore says with their job, they always help people, but mostly on a person's bad day. When we can have contact with the public or the taxpayers when they're having a good day, um, it's, just, it's just something extra that we can do. And we, it makes us feel good about it. Both David and Eric are amazed how much response the pitcher has gotten. Eric says anyone can do what they did. Yep, just to offer help. Um, you see someone struggling with their groceries, offer to hold the door. Um, those types of things are just, they're kind of becoming lost. There, there needs to be more of the offer, just not the necessary that it's going to be, the offer is going to be accepted. Just more of the actually the offering to do it. David says people sometimes get angry when he declines their help but does appreciate the offer. He just wants to be independent. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. After the firefighters finished cutting the grass, they hit up a lemonade stand nearby before being called back out. The bathroom remodel for a Christine North Dakota homeowner is finally complete, thanks to the help of area organizations volunteering their time and resources. This is what Dolores Kramlick's bathroom was left looking like nearly two years ago. She paid who she thought was a licensed contractor 1200 bucks to remodel her bathroom. He started the work, took the money, and left the bathroom half gutted. Kramlick called our whistleblower hotline back in 2015, and we were able to get her money back, but her bathroom wasn't fixed. Bell State Bank heard about the story and contacted the members of the Home Builders Association. Last week, they started repairing the bathroom with help from Stone Ridge Builders. Kramlick says she's thankful for their hard work. After nearly two years of sponge baths, she's been able to take three showers since yesterday. If there's an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline at 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Officials say the automated bomb threat phone calls targeting local schools could be part of a bigger nationwide problem. It's called swatting, the act of intentionally triggering a response by emergency services with a fake report. And yesterday's calls affected schools in at least 19 states, Minnesota and North Dakota included. The FBI says they're aware of the calls but are not actively investigating their origin. A nationally known school security expert says these calls could have even come from overseas. And they all present significant challenges, require a great deal of investigative time and cost, and create a great deal of anxiety in school communities. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll have more in the aftermath of these hoax phone calls and what parents with kids in school need to know about their local districts. Grand Forks police are asking for your help as they try to identify this man. He's a person of interest in a theft that occurred at Borrowed Bucks last week. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. An investigation is underway on a crash that killed a teenage boy. Police have confirmed 14-year-old Christopher Roach died Sunday at Sanford Health in Fargo. He was hurt one week ago today when the bike he was riding was hit by a truck. Visitation for Roach will be at Hout Funeral Home in Jamestown tomorrow from 3 to 5 p.m. with a prayer service at 5. 
At this time, it's unknown if charges will be filed against the truck driver. A man is facing several charges after allegedly breaking into a Lakes Country home naked. The Ottertail County Sheriff's Office says Tyler Janofsky was confronted and got into a fight with a homeowner in Ottertail, Minnesota, yesterday morning. The homeowner was able to hold the suspect in the home until deputies arrived. Janofsky is being held on charges of burglary, theft, and assault. Investigators believe controlled substance abuse was a contributing factor in that incident. A Pennsylvania judge has ordered entertainer Bill Cosby to stand trial for sexual assault. The judge ruled that there is enough evidence for 78-year-old Cosby to be criminally tried on charges that he assaulted a former Temple University employee at his mansion in 2004, which Cosby claims was consensual. Cosby has not entered a plea on this charge of aggravated assault. The entertainer has denied similar allegations from about 50 women. Cosby faces up to 10 years in prison if convicted. Some sunshine and quiet weather for this Tuesday, but we are expecting some changes. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson to find out more details. Hutch? Well, the heat of the day has generated a couple of cumulonimbus uh, thunderstorm clouds off to the east of the Red River Valley right now. One of them strong enough to possibly be creating some small hail in northwestern Becker County. Taking you in on these cells right now, southern parts of Ottertail County and, well, north of Alexandria. A few spotty thunder showers. These are just generally producing some heavy rain. Up in northern Becker, here is our stronger cell. It's making its way toward the Wabin area. As you take a look at this, where you see these lines here, those are 15 minute increments. So that first round there would be in that area around 15 minutes and into the Wabin area by about 30 minutes from now. So by about 5. 35. You could see some heavier rain, maybe some hail. Urbank, Battle Lake will be seeing some showers as well. And a little bit of a sprinkle making its way into Frazee now. The only other area of activity is near Walhalla, heading into Cavalier. A sprinkle could be hitting you, but no thunder or lightning with those. There's the storm cloud producing the potential hail in the background there, looking off over the northern Becker County area. Temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s for the next couple of hours. For us, Grand Forks, very nice 70s tonight with wind fairly light and variable. There will be a better chance of rain as we go through what will become a wet Wednesday for some. Details in your hour by hour forecast are in a few moments. All right, thank you, Hutch. Mm -hmm. Today, the people in Carrington, North Dakota, are once again voting on whether to build a new elementary school. The superintendent says the new plan has cut some items and will cost less than the proposal voted down in February. If approved, construction is expected to start in the spring of 2017. If the referendum fails, the Carrington Public School website says they will continue to repair and maintain the existing building. The polls are open until 7 tonight. And tonight, we have an exclusive sneak peek into UND's new $124 million medical school. Administrators just started moving in as they prepare to start classes in August. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us around what will soon be the training grounds for many of the entire state's healthcare professionals. The new four-story building contains 325,000 square feet of floor space. The massive job of getting everyone moved in will take weeks. When the move is complete, the new facility will house around 1,500 people, around 1,000 students and some 500 faculty and staff. The medical students will be here, physical therapy, occupational therapy, medical lab science, sports medicine, uh, graduate degrees in basic sciences okay. will all be here. When you walk in the building, you'll be greeted by a main lobby that soars into the sky, where you'll see floating stairs above your head. Also connected to the main lobby is a food court that will be available for anyone to use. This massive building will also contain state-of-the-art research laboratories that haven't been moved in yet. However, the med school has already snagged $45 million of federal research grants that in part will be used to pay staff. It can help to pay for part of their salary, which they would use then to help to hire lab techs and graduate students and whatnot. So research is certainly a big economic engine and something that we're, we're doing very well right now. It has not been determined yet exactly what will be done with the space provided by the old medical school. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. 
Those $45 million of research grants will be used in part to find cures for a growing number of infectious diseases that are becoming immune to current treatments. Tunnels across Minnesota are managed and inspected by the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Typically, a worker crawls inside with a flashlight, tries to see as far into the tunnel as they can, and takes notes. But that's about to change. MnDOT's Rob Coughlin invented hydro Hive Hydraulic Inspection Vehicle Explorer. It's made of a radio-controlled car and a camera with lights on top. The camera relays video back to a tablet, which Rob watches as the car approaches each joint in the culvert. It's wildly cost-efficient, safer, and more accurate than human inspections. Now, MnDOT districts all over the state are requesting hives of their own. Brats, ribs, or burgers, what will you be throwing on the grill this summer? Well, this weekend is the unofficial kickoff to the grilling season. The crew at Meats by John and Wayne says they get all their product raw and cut it themselves. We age our meat um, eight weeks. Most grocery stores um, age it like um, a week to two weeks. And then we all our products we make in-house. We don't order them in and just give it, sell it to you guys. We, we make it, package it, and put it out for sale. Some of the best tips, according to FoodNetwork.com, include uh, befriending your butcher, get good grades of meat, spring for USDA Prime for certified Black Angus steaks, and choice grade steak is a good, less expensive alternative.